Wally, Baymax, and Optimus Prime. All are charismatic characters in the cinematic universe of the 21st century, but as much as I'd like a loyal companion like R2-D2 or the trustworthy C-3PO, what sets them apart in my heart is not the way that they have stolen the hearts of millions around the world, but it's the terabytes of calculations and the millions of algorithms that compose them. Hello, my name is David Lee, and I belong to a movement of young scholars resilient on the international trek along the path of technological evolution with artificial intelligence or AI just around the corner. So, before we discuss the future of mankind, let's briefly scroll through history. Technology as we know it, like all success stories, have humble origins as tools and weapons in the Stone Age, primarily used for purposes such as hunting or gathering resources, ultimately endorsing life. Let's fast forward to the Golden Age, art and antiquities prevail, and the permeating technology yields the strive for a greater quality for life. Then came industrialization, automated vehicles, automated weapons, World War I, World War II, international communication, international flight, and we have now arrived in the information age. Here in this age, we can't escape the presence of mobile technology. And I may even venture to claim that someone in the audience right now is using his or phone, his or her, his or her phone right now. <laughs> Sorry. Um, many of us claim the 21st century to be the beginning of the reign of games and social media. Others claim it to be the beginning of the end of all of mankind. But all I see is supercomputers, speed, efficiency, code, AI. Technology in the status quo belongs to the world of man. So what exactly is AI? While the common myth depicts AI in fictional forms, such as the robots or superhuman characters who incorporate technology into their bodies, like the Terminator, this is simply a computational concept modifying the way in which existing machines operate into more intelligent ones. Moreover, the question of our era as brought forth through AI uh, contradicts historical ones examining survival and instead asks how the technology around us can think for themselves, fundamentally imitating, imitating or emulating the human neural network and ultimately striving for a greater and more efficient quality of living. So we talked about what AI is, but what does this mean for the rest of the world concerned and what can we do with it? Well, let's take Google and NASA, for example. They have developed a method of quantum computing called D-Wave that uses 1,097 qubits as its primary unit of computation. Uh, essentially, while binary units are what are used to store data in the present tense uh, through ones or zeros, uh, qubits use ones and zeros to initially double storage capacity and then eventually uh, exponentially increase the processing power of a machine. <laughs> now all of this technological lingo may or may not have meant anything to you, but here's something that will. Artificially intelligent machines that utilize this method of quantum computing will outperform supercomputers by more than 3,600 times. This means that it is faster than our average desktop computers by more than 100 million times. Uh, it's pretty mind blowing if I do say so myself. Uh, instead of talking about it, why don't I show you the next example? Uh, the second example I have to show you is actually featuring uh, a childhood friend of ours, Tetris. So in case you're wondering, this game is currently being played by the code that I've written, not by myself, clearly, uh, or by anyone else backstage. Uh, this program fundamentally, fundamentally demonstrates um, the elements of AI. Um, essentially, given a specific input, the machine is able to evaluate that input and then generate an appropriate output to find the optimal solution. In this case, the pieces at the top are being randomly generated from a set of seven pieces um, and the machine then reads the situation or the input, um, which is the given uh, state of the board, um, including all the blocks that are placed, and then evaluates uh, several factors, including the aggregate height of each column, the spaces or gaps in between each blocks, and then the possible points that the location of the pieces can generate. And so given the input of the board, the machine is able to evaluate it and then create an appropriate output that generates the maxim, uh, that maximizes points. And so in a more personal fa personable fashion, uh, this Tetris game uh, that's playing itself uh, demonstrates AI. And for a non-gamer like myself, this entire process would take minutes, but what I do in minutes, the computer is able to do in a matter of milliseconds. Right, so that's enough of that. <laughs> um, <laughs> so 
um, enough aside from this personal endeavor, uh, one industry that will undoubtedly be, tra be transformed by artificial intelligence is the medical industry regarding physical operation, experiment experimentation of pharmaceuticals, and simply coming up with results for its different science sectors such as those dealing with alteration of DNA. Today, thousands of medical databases, uh, professional journals, and empirical indexes exist, all of which contribute to trillions of facts, uh, known diseases, known cures, and precedent cases. Now, for obvious reasons, humans have been incapable of compiling these amounts of data, let alone interpret it, and then uh, debunk different illnesses that we have yet to cure, or even under new treatments. AI offers the ability to not only specifically pinpoint the symptoms or traits of certain maladies or illnesses, but also corroborate that information with existing databases to then unearth a new treatment that otherwise would never have been tested. In fact, a man by the name of Demis Hassabis, he's the president of a company called AlphaGo, uh, recently pioneered uh, a project in the development of a supercomputer that uh, was able to learn 3,000 years of human knowledge in just 40 days. Now, the same man with the same company led groundbreaking research that allowed modeling for a new protein that can be used in life-saving medicine. And just like that, with one industry and one example, millions of lives are saved annually. And just like that, AI becomes a friend of man. Similar computational abilities have allowed for the discovery of solutions um, that were unprecedented and allowed tackling issues that were thought impossible to solve. But at what cost? Of the plethora of issues that AI inherently imposes on the human society, the primary concern regarding this idea of machine learning has to do with job displacement. According to the Daily Mail, nearly 40% of all jobs will be automated by the year 2030 in the United States alone. And so now mankind faces a dilemma. While technological advancements have largely been beneficial, allowing our society today to be what it is, our in efforts to integrate technology further into our society would cause hardworking men and women to lose a sense of belonging, not only in the industrial workforce, but also in the grand scheme of societal standards. But ultimately, the ubiquity of artificial intelligence is inevitable, despite the objections from several groups of people. Whether it takes a few years, a few decades, or even a few centuries, the past can attest to the relentless track of technology from one era to another. So the only primary concern uh, that we're left with is asks the fate of the human species relative to the ever-evolving automation. Of course, people believe in copious myths or simply false predictions, but the truth remains the same, that members of our era, of the information age and of the 21st century, must guide technology and machinery in the status quo to complement our society, to create a haven of belonging for both man and machine, to reform rather than replace, and to stand, not as a foe, but as a friend. Thank you.